Hey guys, James here. Today I want to make a video that is uh, that was requested by one of the club members in my uh, photo club. And this is from Steve Hedin. And he says that uh, I would love to see some tutorials on using brushes, uh, starting basic to more advanced, how to actually brush smaller to larger items and what exactly the feathering does, um, etc. This seems to be an area I need more finesse and understanding in. Um, so yeah, great. Um, Brushing is one of the things that you pretty much do every time you enter Photoshop. Uh, you know, especially if you're at that stage where you're not making global adjustments to your images. So what is brushing for? What do you use it uh, for? When do you use it? How do you use it best? Uh, let's, let's just answer all of these questions. So when you open Photoshop, you're going to uh, look at something like this and you're going to have your layers on the right hand side here. You're going to have all your tools on the left hand side. And the brush is definitely one of the more common uh, tools that you're going to use. So the two ways to get to your brush, you can either go to the toolbar here and then uh, just click it and that'll give you your brush. And then you can also hold down and click and get access to some more. But in all, all honesty, I've never used any of these other ones. Uh, I've never had a time where I needed them. So I just use the brush. You can also get there uh, if you're just using the, the move tool. You can also just get there by hitting the hotkey B and that'll take you to brush. If you want to go back uh, to the move tool, you can just click it or you can hit V. Uh, v is in Victor. So when you're in the brush tool, you have some options. Any tool that you select over on the left hand side here, you're going to get some options come up at the top. So you see when I click the move tool, I get different options. If I click the healing brush, different options. The brush is going to give us these options. So for all of my um, Photoshop and Lightroom, and really I use it all the time now, uh, any needs that I have for navigating or brushing or anything like that, I use what's called a Wacom uh, tablet. So if you're looking here, um, this is my, my tablet. And it just sits on my desk next to my keyboard. And then I have this, which is a stylus. And this just replaces my mouse, basically. So I can use this just like as if I was a, a painter and painting on a canvas and I can just draw on this tablet and it gives it just gives you a better feel um, and better control over the image and you know where you're brushing it's just light years ahead of using a mouse or a, uh, a trackpad or anything like that so I've been using them for probably four or five years now and I would never uh, go back to using a mouse for editing photos uh, but I, like I said, I even use this to you know navigate uh, the web and, and do everything. So it's uh, one of those things that just becomes second nature after a while. So uh, when you have a pen tablet, uh, the reason I brought that up is because you can go to this little icon right here and bring up your brush preferences. And for my uh, brush, I don't like having anything like the shape dynamics um, or uh, the transfer or anything like that selected you can set this stuff to where you know like your the shape of your brush is going to be determined by how hard you press on the uh, the tablet but again it, it's just not something i've ever really enjoyed so i have all of that stuff turned off just uh just pre-warning so um from there you're going to make sure that your mode uh, pretty much all the time is set to normal. And then uh, your opacity is the biggest thing. That, that's the first choice you need to make when choosing what you want to do with your brush. So you can come up here and you know toggle this up and down to go from 0 or 1 to 100%. You can also just hover over opacity and then just drag left and right if you don't want to worry about going to the drop down menu. But the quickest way is just to use the number keys on your keyboard. So I can hit one and that'll give me uh, 10%. I can hit five and that'll give me 50. If you want 100, you just hit one, zero, zero. 
If you want like 45%, you just hit four or five really quick. Uh, but I usually just worry about uh, increments of 10%, so I'll just choose 50% or 30% or 80%. Um, that's that's basically it. So flow, you know, just keep that at 100%. Uh, most of the time, I've never really needed to change it. The, the other really important factor with your brush is the feather on it. To get to the feather, um, what I usually do is just hold... Uh, control and then click or it's basically just right clicking anywhere in the image and that'll give us this dialog box right here and that's going to give us our size of the brush or your hardness so I don't use this for size because it doesn't really give you any you know easy way to see the size of it except just going over like this after you've you know selected it but mainly what I'm looking for here is hardness and I will typically uh, start around 0% on hardness because that's usually what I need. Uh, and that's 0% is going to give you a very, very soft edged brush. But if there's times where you need a really hard one, then you can come into this dialog box and just take it all the way up to where you need it. So let's just go over really quick the difference between those. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new layer here on my document by hitting shift command in and I'm just going to call this um, black okay then I'm going to fill this document or this layer rather in by grabbing the paint bucket tool I'm going to hit the D key which is going to reset my palette over here to pure black and pure white and then since black is on top I'll just click here and that's going to fill the entire image in with black so now I'll go to my brush by hitting B I'm going to paint with 100% opacity and again, we have our hardness. Let's set it to 0%. Okay. Oops. There we go. And then uh, let's go to white on our palette. So to do that, I'll hit the X key, which is just a shortcut. You can also just uh, click between the two by hitting this one right here. Okay. So uh, another little secret with the brush tool on a Mac, if you hold down control and option, and then just drag with your mouse or your pen tablet. That's going to be the, a really easy way to resize your brush. You can also use the bracket keys, but they just go incrementally larger. So you have to kind of keep pressing it down if you want to get really big or really small as compared to where you were before. So I usually just do the control option option uh, like this. I think that'd be control alt on a PC. So, okay, so let's get a really big brush here. Something like this. And I'm just going to click one time and that is a 0% uh, soft edged brush, okay? So if we go up to 100% and then click right here, that's 100%. Okay, if we go to, let's say, I'm just gonna type in 50 here. Okay, that's 50%. So this will hopefully just give you an idea of what these brushes are doing. So 0%, 100%, and somewhere in the middle at 50%. Um, here's where it's going to really come into play on when you're going to need each one. So I'll delete this layer just by hitting the delete key. We have two images here uh, from a location in Hawaii. Okay, so this is the image for, that I want to use for the foreground. And this is an image that I, you know, it's darkened up a little bit for the background or for the sky rather. So I want to just take the sky from this image and put that on this image below. So to do that, I wanna reach for a layer mask. Okay, so I'll come down here and add a mask to this layer. Now, what I wanna do is just re reveal the sky in this layer. So I'm gonna invert this mask to black, and that basically covers up this layer here on top. So since it's a black mask, it's covering the layer that it's on, so I can't see any of that layer. The only thing I can see now is this bottom layer because this one's being covered up by a black mask. So if I want to reveal anything from this layer below, I need to paint some white onto this mask. So to do that, I'll grab from my brush and I'm going to paint with 100% opacity here just to show you. So look at this brush now, it's really hard. Just to show you why you wouldn't want to paint with 100% opacity. So we're painting with white at 
and I'll just go across the image here. Okay, so you can see now that I've painted that sky in from the image below. But look at the edge of the brush here. It's really hard. And you can see how it just kind of incrementally kind of skips across the image here. If I had gone really slow, it wouldn't have done that, but um, that's why it looks the way it does. And that's not good. You know, that makes it r look really obvious that you've drawn across the image with a brush. And uh, you don't want anybody to be able to notice that you've done, you know, work on particular parts of the image. So we will uh, hit Command-Z to undo that. And now we're back to where we were. So now, uh, bring up my brush again, right click, and we'll go down to 0% opacity, okay? And we'll paint with 50% um, opacity on the brush itself. So 0% uh, feather on the brush and 50% opacity, which means if I just draw across this, it's not gonna paint 100% through the mask, it's only gonna paint 50% of the way through the mask. Okay, so now you'll see here, as I go across the image, it's much more subtle. All right, and I'm just going through it in one stroke. I haven't let off the pen uh, tablet at all. Okay, so now I'll uh, option click the mask itself and you can see this is the change that it's made. If I go over this, you know, one more time, okay, that'll give us a little bit brighter and a little bit brighter, okay? Now if I go back, you'll see the change that's been made. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see the before and the after. Now you can see how much more subtle of a change that this has given us, okay? And I can even bring it down further into the image if I want to. Okay, something like that. So that's why you would use a soft brush as compared to a hard brush. And really, I just I do this for every adjustment that I make to the image. So now that I'm done blending those two layers together, let's reach for a levels adjustment layer. Okay, so with levels, a lot of times what you're doing is you're trying to create some more contrasts and purify the colors in the image. So the best way to do that is to take your highlights right here and then bring them in and then take your midtones and bring those towards the highlights. And it'll give you something like this. Okay. All right, so I don't want to make that change to the entire image. I just want to, you know, selectively paint it on certain parts, especially look what it's doing to the sky. We don't want that. So once I've made my adjustment, I always invert the mask by hitting Command or Control I. Okay, and you can see now that the difference, we have a much flatter image than we had before. So I'll resize my brush, I'll paint with 50% opacity, and then I'm just going to selectively paint this into the image. Okay, I don't want to even touch the sky right now. All right, so something like that. All right, and I'm losing a little bit too much shadow detail in these rocks right here and over here. So what I'll do is I'll hit X to watch the uh, swatch here. I'll hit X to invert that to black. And now I'm painting with black and I'm gonna hit two to paint it 20% opacity. And I'm just gonna reverse that. This is basically erasing the change that I just made. And I'm gonna paint some of it out of the rocks right here to get back some of that detail. Okay, like that, like that, good. Okay, so now we'll do an adjustment for the sky. So I'm going to go back to levels and create a new levels adjustment layer. And now I'm just looking at the sky. So I'm going to bring the sky down a little bit. Okay, Oop. So something around there. And then bring the whites up just a little bit, not a lot. And you can see now that it's done way too much to the foreground. So again, I'll invert the mask, collapse that down and then paint with uh, white at 50% opacity, and then I'll just paint that change into the sky here. And then I'll just go over it once more. And I kind of just keep going over it until I think I've you know, gone too far and it doesn't really need the change anymore. So somewhere around there would be good. Okay, the next thing I'd probably do is reach for a, a hue saturation adjustment layer and you can grab this little slider right here and bring up the blues. 
definitely in the water there. And I'll bring up the oranges in the sky, make those pop a little bit more. Okay, and this should be like yellows. Let's bring those up a little bit just to make everything pop a little bit more. Okay, um, so on this one, I think that I took the oranges a little bit too far. So there's two ways I could, you know, change that. I could either just grab this and bring them down a little bit more, you know, like that. Okay, but if I've already made the change and I don't, I'm not in that adjustment layer and I don't feel like going back to it, you can just paint some of that out. Okay, so I'll grab the brush, go to black, go to like 40 or let's say 30%, and then just paint on that layer mask and it'll remove, you know, that specific percentage of the orange from the image. Okay, so uh, I hope this has kind of given you an idea of how to use brushes inside of Photoshop. Uh, it's something that I do literally every time I open the program. Brushes is just one of the things that you do every time, just like masking. Uh, so if you have any other questions, just feel free to let me know, and I will be happy to answer any questions. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.